second lecture in the communication section and it's about communicating effectively in meetings. In the last lecture, we talked about interpersonal communication skills. The points discussed can obviously be applied to all sorts of scenarios in both your personal and professional life. In the corporate world, meetings are commonplace. They serve many purposes. For one, they encourage teamwork by providing a space where employees can brainstorm together, set team goals and engage in healthy dialogue. Meetings additionally provide an opportunity to share information such as financial updates, contract negotiations, workplace issues and new projects. Of course, meetings can sometimes veer on into thin ice when there is an entire team gathered around the table. Never mind the fact that the room is filled with a number of personality types and perspectives. But if there's a heated topic on the table, for example, reviewing a failed project, then tensions are bound to be high. One of the hardest blows to team morale is a high stakes meeting that implodes because of poor communication and meeting management. The points we will cover today are built from the concepts in the interpersonal communication skills lecture, just contextualized for meetings with stakeholders. These could be the most important meetings you have. There are many great resources online about communication and one I can direct you to is a website called Shaping Change. Visit www.shapingchange.com.au. It is a great website. I've taken the following information from Shaping Change with their approval. Here there are four tips to bear in mind to communicate more effectively in your next meeting. The first is about mind your tone. Does the message you're delivering sound negative or positive? What feeling is your tone reflecting? The energy in your voice can provide many clues into what you're actually thinking. If you're delivering praise to an employee for a recent success, but your tone lacks energy and comes across more so bored or uninterested, it would be the same as not praising the employee at all, or worse, even criticizing them. The same holds true when critiquing a team's performance. There's no need to be belligerent or disparaging as this will only put your employees on the defense and increase the tension in the room. Fertile ground for argumentation and division. Mind your tone and learn how to positively provide constructive criticism. Doing so will keep team morale where it needs to be and will motivate your employees to do better. The second tip is to choose your words wisely. This goes along hand in hand with the above. Something as simple as the words you use can build up a team or tear one down. By all means, avoid language that makes assumptions or discriminates. Matt Stratt, CEO of the HR software Namely, also says this, don't make statements that personally call out the employee like you should, you didn't, or your skills. Instead, discuss the issue by saying customers can't get what they need, or this isn't clear. No one wants to be singled out in a meeting and made to feel like their experience, education, and or skill set isn't where it needs to be. It can be demoralizing. When you choose the right words, however, and shift the focus on a project's objectives, it takes the weight off your team members and helps them to remember the bigger picture. Tip three, watch your body language. We don't just speak with our words, we speak with our bodies as well. In fact, our body language very often betrays what we're truly thinking or the state of our attitude. Eye rolling, crossed arms, pursed lips, these are all expressions all of us have undoubtedly seen in a meeting or two. Pay attention to the way your own body is speaking during meetings. If you present a closed off body, for example, you may intimidate your employees and cause them to shy away from offerings and inputs and ideas. Forcing a smile can indicate insincerity, potentially causing a team member to feel their contribution to a meeting fell short. And of course, looking at the clock, your watch or your phone is a sure sign of boredom or impatience, which is a sure way to guarantee an employee never speaks up in a meeting again. You've made them feel undervalued. On the other hand, positive body language, such as relaxed posture, leaning in when someone is speaking, good eye contact, taking notes, and head nodding and smiling will allow your employees to feel at ease, validated, and understood. The fourth tip is to be attentive. This last tip might sound really obvious, but you'd be surprised how often teams fail to practice it. One of the easiest ways to achieve attentiveness is simply by providing an agenda at the beginning of every meeting. 
An agenda is essential to planning and a productive meeting. It provides a list of topics for discussion. It provides structure and focus for the meeting. It ensures that all information is covered and perhaps most importantly, it allows each team member to adequately prepare for the meeting and thus increases engagement, teamwork and information sharing. Nothing's hidden when you work with an agenda, so employees don't feel ambushed by topics, thus lowering tension and stress and allowing them to communicate more calmly. Another important tool is active listening. Active listening can help teams avoid misunderstandings and more easily resolve conflicts. There are a number of trainings on active listening available that can help you and your employees excel as communicators. Meetings unfortunately get a bad reputation more often than not, but it doesn't have to be that way. When you manage your meetings effectively and learn how effective communication can aid you and your employees in sharing ideas and building the team up, your meetings will become productive forums where goals are not only set, but achieved like never before.